guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Justina, creator of Bohemian Magic Studios, and I just really hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all holding it down in quarantine. I don't even remember what day quarantine that we're in. It's been weeks, months, feels like it's been a year. Um, but I know we all, we're all anxious, sitting around, wondering what we can do to either help the situation or, I don't know, some of us feel useless, some of us feel helpless, and there's a lot of different confusing feelings going around right now. I know you probably noticed that I haven't really uploaded anything on my channel in the past month or so. Honestly, I've just been trying to process all this, and it's a lot to handle, I'm not gonna lie. Some of us are, you know, working from home. Some of us actually do still have to go to work. Fortunately, I do still have to go to work. I'm a nanny, so I work privately for a family. Both the parents are working from home, and the kids are home from school and have been home from school for about a month now or so and I needed to watch them while the parents are, are hidden away in rooms working to make a living to still be able to provide for their family and I'm just trying to do the same thing. So I wanted to make sure I took some extra protective measures at work to protect both myself and the family that I am working for. I thought it would be a good idea to start wearing a mask at work. So I want to give a shout out to my friend Jen on Facebook who brought this to my attention. The CDC does now recommend that everybody wear masks in the Public, whether you're shopping or even in my case if you are working in somebody else's house you should be protected with a mask um, so people are starting to make their own masks because we don't want to dip into the medical supply and that's really important that we don't if you are not a healthcare worker working directly with COVID-19 cases then you should not be wearing an N95 mask so this is an Olsen mask right here I have followed a very simple pattern and uh, you can find the pattern at the website down below I will link it over over here and in the description so you can download that. This mask, it does have a little pocket so you can add a little filter in here and at the end of this video, if you stick around, I will show you what I put in here and how I fit it to this particular mask. So today I thought I would show you how I make this Olsen mask right here from start to finish because I found a couple videos on YouTube here but a lot of them were very poorly lit or the directions were a little hard to follow. Before I get into this video and before I get down to business, and show you how to make this mask, please make sure you comment, rate, and subscribe. Definitely hit the notification bell so you get all of my videos. I do have a quarantine vlog in the works. Uh, just a bunch of little random things that I've been doing while I'm in lockdown here. Another thing is if you want to follow me on Patreon, I do have a behind the scenes video for this one for my $5 patrons, so definitely check that out. And also, I want to give a huge thanks to all my dollar patrons as well. And there's also some higher tiers, including a new $20 tier that I just rolled out where I send you guys a nice little fun envelope stuffed with a bunch of stickers, postcards, cute little ephemera via snail mail. So definitely get in on that for $20. It covers supplies and shipping. So I will be able to send you guys some magical mail. So I'm really excited about that. So definitely check out my new $20 tier on Patreon. Let's get started. For this project, you're going to need fabric, scissors, thread, Sharpie marker, two hair ties, and your six cutout pattern pieces. You can find these in the PDF, which I will link in the description below. You'll also need some pins, so get those as well. Let's get started. First, make sure you have all your patterns printed out. Page one should be cheek one and mouth one. Second page, mouth two, cheek two. Page three is face one, and page four is face two. Now begin with cutting your pattern pieces out along the solid line, not the dotted line. The dotted line indicates where we will be sewing, which is about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Cut the rest of your pattern pieces out the same way and then place them all to the side for a moment. Get out your fabric and when you lay it out, you want to make sure the print side is face down. We will be making all of our markings on the back side of the fabric. And yeah, cat. <laughs> lay out your pattern pieces onto your fabric and then trace around each piece with your Sharpie. It's okay if it's a little sloppy, because we are going to cut these pieces out anyway. Just make sure your cutting is even. Once your pieces are cut out, Place your pattern back onto each piece in the correct direction. I use some safety pins to hold my patterns in place for now. You can use straight pins if you have them, but I only had these on hand. 
just use whatever you have access to. So I put these paper patterns back in line with our fabric pieces we just cut out because we are going to need to acknowledge the numbers here. Now specifically on cheek two, let's take a look at side number seven, which has a line extending past the quarter inch dotted line. You're going to cut a notch here. Now cut the same notch line for side two. Be careful not to cut past the quarter inch line. We will get to the reason for these notches a little bit later. But now let's cut those same notches on our cheek one pattern piece. So now that notches two and seven are cut on cheek one and two, let's place those to the side for now. Now I will be laying out and tracing the rest of my pattern pieces. I did mine in sections because they wouldn't all fit in the camera frame at once, but feel free to trace and cut out all of yours in one shot. Now following the same directions as cheek one and two, after you cut out the fabric, rematch each one with their correct pattern piece, ensuring that all sides match up correctly. Pin the paper onto the fabric piece so you can acknowledge the number sides in a bit. So just to recap, you should have face one and face two, mouth one and mouth two, and cheek one and cheek two. Cheek one and two are the only pattern pieces you will have to cut notches on side seven and two. Put everything to the side for now and let's focus on mouth one and two. Find side three on both pieces and match those sides together, pressing the correct sides of the fabric together. Take your pins out. We are going to sew along side three from a quarter of an inch width from the border. Don't forget to take your paper off before you start sewing. Now remember, we are sewing along side three. If it helps to keep you sewing in a straight line, mark a dotted line on your fabric with pen. Now we are ready to begin sewing. One great sewing tip is to make sure you backstitch a few stitches when starting and when finishing your piece. And don't forget to cut off any hanging threads. Now that you have sewn together mouth one and two, you can put those to the side and take out your pattern pieces for face one and face two. Place the good sides of your fabric together and find side three. Now take your pins out and take your paper pattern off, keeping in mind which side is three. Now again, mark your quarter inch from the border and sew along that dotted line. Again, remember your back stitches and snip your hanging strings as you go. This will be the front of your mask. If you turn it to its right side, you can see it's already starting to take shape. Let's turn it back inside out because there is more work to do. Now put your sewn together face one and two off to the side for now and take out your sewn together mouth one and two again. Find side five on both sides and fold the fabric over toward the wrong side a quarter of an inch. Make sure mouth one and two is open and you don't sew them together along side five. Sew a straight line down along that quarter inch, and once again, don't forget about your back stitches. Okay, side one is done, and now let's do the other side. Fold the print side of the fabric over a quarter of an inch toward the wrong side, smooth it out, and sew your straight line down. It should look like this so far. Okay, let's go back to cheek one and two. Find side six and take your pin and paper off. Now follow the same quarter inch fold over method toward the back of the fabric like we did on the previous pieces and sew that in place.
Now do the same with cheek 2. Now you should have your quarter inch folded over and sewn on both cheek 1 and cheek 2. Looking great so far. Let's put those aside and take out your sewn together mouth 1 and 2 and lay it unfolded and flat. Take out your cheek 1 and 2 because now we are going to acknowledge those notches we cut earlier. Line up your notches with the very edge of your folded over and sewn seams on mouth 1 and 2. We are going to sew a tack straight across from the top left edge of your cheek piece to the notch. Do this for the bottom as well. Also, do not sew your cheek piece closed because we are going to use this as our pocket and we'll need this open to turn your mask inside out later. Now repeat for the left cheek piece as well, making sure your notches match up. Okay, the top tack is sewed. It should look like this when you're done. Now match up your bottom notch to the edge of the fabric and sew your tack from here to the edge of your cheek piece as well. Now that both tacks are in place, your pocket should be formed on the one side. This is where you will place your filter later on when the mask is complete. Now let's follow the same steps for the left side of our mask with our remaining loose cheek piece. Match up your notches and sew your tack from the notch to the edge of your cheek piece. Do this for the bottom as well, ensuring that your notch is matching up here too. Now sew your tack in place. Now you have created both of your pockets. Now stick with me because we are almost done. Let's go back to our sewn together face one and two pieces, which is now the front of our mask. Place that together with your completed mouth and cheek pocket piece we just sewed. We are going to sew around the entire perimeter of the mask, a bit closer to the edge than the quarter inch seam on your previous pieces. This part was a bit tricky to line up all the sides, so I pinned the top corners in place for now until the edges around everything else are sewn. You can take your pins out as you go. Once you have sewn around the entire perimeter, now it's time to turn it right side out using the pockets we have created. This pocket is where we will also put our filter, which I will show you how to insert in a little bit. Now we're done sewing our mask, but we still need a way to hold it onto our faces. So it's time to install some ear holders. You can use standard elastic, but I thought these hair ties were much easier to deal with. Take your hair tie and place it around one of your sleeves. Fold your sleeve over the hair tie, securing it snugly in place and sew close to the edge. Okay, now that side is done. Now it's time to do the other side. I forgot to record mine, but definitely don't forget to do your other side. Okay guys, now that my mask is all finished, I will show you how to add your paper towel filter as well as a pipe cleaner to seal your nose in place. 
Lay down a sheet of paper towel and place your mask directly on top. Cut your paper towel around the entire perimeter of the mask and take your freshly cut paper towel and slide it into your filter pocket. Smooth it out and make sure it is completely flat and in place. Now cut off the tabs sticking out of your pocket on both sides. Now for your nose sealer. Take your pipe cleaner and insert it into your pocket. Shape the wire upward toward the brim of the mask and cut off the excess sticking out of your pocket sides. And there you have it. So I have added my paper towel filter and also my pipe cleaner is in here to seal my nose in. So my pipe cleaner is up toward the bridge of your nose. So when you put this on your face, you want to pinch that wire around your nose so no particles can get in and around your nostrils. And then pinch that wire around the bridge of your nose. It. And then when you're done, you want to alleviate the tension on your ears, like so. Voila! Now a couple things about this Olsen mask that I would like to explain to you. Some things you can use as a filter, people have been using coffee filters, paper towels, and um, those vacuum HEPA bags, but the HEPA bags are the most effective. I don't remember what the percentage rate was, but a paper towel works as well, it's just not as effective as a HEPA bag, but use whatever you have access to. Personally, I, I have been using the paper towel method because it's cheap and affordable and I can just simply put it in here and take it out and discard it and not have to worry about spending a lot of money to replace that filter when I need to because I wear I've been wearing this every single day now you also must be thinking if you're wearing this every single day then are you washing this every single day and the answer is no because you can sterilize this in other ways. You can actually put this in your oven at 250 degrees for about 30 minutes and that should disinfect this. So you don't have to wash it in your laundry every single day because the more you wash it, the more worn down it will get. So I would recommend just when you come home from work, first you take your filter out, you sterilize this in your oven, and then you can just use it the next day. And then on the weekends with your normal wash routine, you can just wash this in your laundry on the weekends just once for the whole week. And then throughout the week on the day to day, you just sterilize it in your oven. So that is a much easier and quicker way to maintain it. And another thing is you want to make sure that when you put this on, this nose section is secure around your face. Some people are using like this kind of elastic, which you can use as well, but I thought these little hair ties were much easier to work with, but it does hurt around your ears after a while, especially if you're wearing this on the day-to-day. -day. It does uh, tend to leave some strain around your ears. So what I've been doing is started putting this little ribbon around these little ear holes like so. This goes around your head and then and you put the little ear holes like that. And then to alleviate the pressure on your ears, I tie it back like this. And then I have a little hair bow on top. And you want to make sure this is secure around your Nose. One other thing you can do to alleviate ear tension is take another piece of fabric that matches your mask and then just loop it, secure it, and then you can put like a little snap or a piece of Velcro on the end and then you can Velcro that up in place or snap that up in place. But just make sure the elastic is not touching your ears or the backs of your ears because that's when it starts to hurt after a while. Another thing I do want to mention is that when you make your face mask, the types of material that you want to stick with is 100% cotton. Um, this is 100% cotton right here. Uh, I heard that if you use any kind of polyester or kind of fabrics that are a little more slippery, the virus does stick to that a lot longer. Um, it's harder for the virus to get through double layers of 100% cotton. Definitely make sure you're using 100% cotton and also the filter inside does give another added layer of protection as well. So it's very important that you are using a filter and you are using a 
double layered mask. Um, another good material you can use is this t-shirt material. This is very form-fitting and very snug to your face as well. This was the first mask I made. This was kind of like a trial run and it's pretty comfortable but it's a little harder to breathe in. I found that um, this loose uh, cotton is comfortable to breathe in and this pocket right here is, gives you a little more breathing room whereas this kind of like suffocates you a bit more. So I definitely would recommend this cotton as opposed to a t-shirt fabric cotton. Look who's whining. She wants to say hi. Say hi. Say hi. So I just want to thank you guys for watching this video. Please be sure again to comment, rate, and subscribe and stick around because the next video I have coming up is a quarantine vlog where I will be doing a lot of random things. It's not really a cohesive video at all. It's just some random things I've been doing to keep myself sane during quarantine. So I thought I would give you guys some things that you could do as well. Yeah, I would love to hear about what you guys have been doing in your quarantine. So definitely let me know in the comments below. So that is all for today. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, wear your masks when you're in public. So I guess happy quarantine guys. This is life now. It's a very strange time, but we'll get through it. We're in this together. Love you guys, and I will see you real soon. Bye. Thank you to my patrons, Megan Baker, D. Carubia, and Michelle Zeman for making this video possible. If you would like to help support these videos, you can join me on my creative journey at patreon.com slash bohemian magic studios. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you back here really soon.